Um, thank you everybody for coming to Vibe today. Um, we try and support the community. Um, we have had, this is our 15th event actually in the shop in the last 18 months I think, so we're doing roughly one a month. Um, normally open to people that sell concessions in the shop, so we have uh, 35 concessions now, that's authors from Lantau and Hong Kong, and generally their wares are up here. Um, they're not just authors, but they're also local charities like um, Tails, Pet Rescue, um, also musicians, um, bands sell their uh, music here. We sell artwork, we sell Sylvia Lowe's cards here. Um, so um, yeah, we do what we can just to um, be part of the community and support everybody. Um, so yeah, this is the 15th um, do, and um, today we're very lucky to have Shah here who lives probably a few yards from where I do in Tai Tai Tong yeah. uh, with John Owen family. And so welcome all. Shah's going to talk for about 40 minutes, I think, um, to intro 30 minutes, uh, talk about her book, um, which is just out. After that, uh, we'll, I'll do some, a couple of Q&As with Shah directly. And, um, and then we'll throw it open to the floor so you can all ask your questions. And then, uh, come in guys. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hiya. Hello. Yeah, so we'll do, we'll do Shah's talk um, and then I'll answer, ask a few questions. We'll open to the floor. And then after that, um, please enjoy the food and the drinks. We've got wine. Um, we're actually sponsored today by um, Sol, Solomon Leader, who lives in Poyo. He's a wine merchant. Uh, he has a company called Value Vigilantes. You can find them on... Um, on the on the on the net um, so their wines are what they've provided to be available to us you can also actually buy them so the white wine is uh, 69 a bottle and the red wine is 84 a bottle okay so there's a little plug for another local company all right guys with that i'm going to pass over to Shah and um, thank you very much thank you Gary. <laughs> thanks so do you, should we start with the little interview yeah, we can Maybe do, that? if you like. I can ask a few sort of questions. So yeah. um, one thing that struck me, and I've been pushed out, so I'm on the camera still. <laughs> <I'll go here. laughs> Breathing as well. So, <laughs> so yeah, basically, um, you know, Charles has been coming to the shop since we started, actually, 18 months ago, yeah. and has been a big supporter of all our dues here and, and the family as well, and we appreciate that. Um, I think early on, sort of end of last year, you were working on a project where you were walking and experiencing our wonderful uh, island of Lantau and, and then uh, had an idea to keep a diary. So at what point did that sort of transform from me doing something personally to, ah, there's something actually that I could probably put in print and let everybody share? Thank you. Okay. So actually, a book that I bought from Vibe was one of my main inspirations for this book. Um, it was called A Cottage Garden and it was just a diary written by a lady and she just wrote about her own beautiful garden in England over the course of a year. And I loved reading, it wasn't, it wasn't very exciting but it's very relaxing reading. And so I thought it's just lovely to read through the course of a year in the seasons and the ebbs and flow. And then coming to Lantau, it was just incredible, this beautiful island and there's so much to see here that I was, it was just hard not to be inspired. And I love to write and I love to take photos. And so it was just a natural progression from just the amazing abundance of life around Lantau to wanting to document and write it and then make a nature journal of it. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, there was one other thing actually I forgot to say in the intro is that this is being filmed um, by Phil, so we've got three cameras here. Uh, this is going out live on Facebook today, so um, Shah's family can see it back in yeah. South Hi, Africa. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mom. Hi, <laughs> Mom. Um, so uh, hopefully none of you object to it going out live on Facebook, and if, if you do, try and hide in the corners if you don't want to be on film. Or similarly, if you want to be on film, move in a bit <laughs> so we can get your photos on. All right, um, so other questions. Um, so I understand, you know, having decided to um, create the book, then of course, once you'd got all the content ready, 
do you then need to find a publisher? I mean, how, how easy was it to find a, a, a publisher and, and go through that process? Well, it was a little bit of a process in that it was quite difficult to find a way to, to find a printer that would not be too expensive. And also the book is full of photographs and that also made it a primarily. So that made a difference too. And then actually I just found a local printer in Wan Chai. And I went in to have a look at what they, they had some of their booklets and I really liked their printing and I liked the paper and I went back and forwards quite a lot, you know, testing different papers and asking them questions and they were very, very helpful. And so I just chose a local printer here in, in Hong Kong. Okay. Yeah, and that makes sense. I mean, it's a lot easier to do that, I think, than run around and try and get sponsorship from people and all that heartache sure. that that can bring, you know. Yes. So, it, it, you know, at the end of the day, do it yourself is, is a, an answer. Yeah. So any budding authors out there, obviously, it's not that hard. You know, and we're in the place where printing is, is available on abundance. It's accessible now. Yeah. yeah. And it's a very good quality printed book, I would say that. So... Okay. Um, all right. I think from there on, we're going to go into the talk okay, and we'll answer excellent. a few questions afterwards. Great. Over to Charm. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for coming. And thank you so much, Gary, for hosting us. Um, I've just, it is amazing how Gary really encourages local authors and musicians. And it's, um, yeah, it's a real hub of creativity, this bookshop. So I thought I'd begin by telling you a, a little about something I saw in my garden this week. And it's called a hummingbird hawk moth. That's what it looks like. You can see it. It doesn't look much <laughs> sitting there. But this is an incredible moth in that it flies just like a hummingbird. It beats its wings so fast. Uh, one website I looked up it said 70 beats in a second. So that is incredibly fast. And it, it hovers and it uh, drinks nectar out of the, the flowers with this really long proboscis. And I'd just been thinking, I knew about it, and I'd just been thinking, I really wanted to see one. And it was in my garden. It was really <laughs> exciting. So when you start to get to know about some of the incredible creatures that live on Lantel, and then you see it, it's like getting that treasure. And then the next day, I was actually just telling Cleo, my daughter, about it. And I walked out and it was there again. I was like, Cleo, come and meet it. Like, no, quick, let's go look. So it actually has, it's a very blurred, you see, my camera is too, it's too slow. But it actually has this, these beautiful orange wings. And it just, it hovers around and it's, it's very swift flyer. So that was a fun discovery for me. So, um... One of the questions we actually did speak a bit about it is why I decided to write this book. And coming to Lantau three years ago, it was, I already, always knew it was a beautiful island. But as I started to explore it more, it was, I was astounded at the diversity and the incredible habitats that you have on this one island. And um, so I've been very lucky to live in some very interesting places. I've been um, in Cape Town and Vancouver. I spent a year in the foothills of the Himalayas and now uh, and in Sydney and now here. And all those places, the wildlife has been fascinating. And it's been a hobby of mine to learn about as much as I can about the plants and the animals and the birds. One of the first things I do when I move to a new place is buy the bird book for the place, which was a little bit difficult here sometimes in Hong Kong because some of these nature books are hard to come by. And actually, it was before your yeah. time. There was a, a Facebook post saying, bird book. And I jumped on my bike. And that morning, came down and bought bird, bird book. And so um, it was really just that I was just inspired by Lantau. So Lantau has beaches and mangroves and wetlands and mountains, forests and streams. And all of these are incredible habitats for different creatures that you can find here. And um, so, and then also one of my other hobbies is, and my passions, is trail running. And when I first arrived in Hong Kong, I was recovering from breaking both of my feet. And so a little tip, if you break one foot, don't limp yourself into breaking the other foot, <laughs> which is what I did halfway across the Golden Gate Bridge. 
So that was a momentous occasion for me. But it did take me a long time to recover. So at first, I just started to walk. And I headed up to the Olympic Trail. And it was um, just, a, I would just not go for too far, but just sh short excursions. And I still remember the first time. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I can come in. No worries. I remember seeing a little skink, and I could not believe that this thing existed. And this has been a theme through my time here. I've been absolutely amazed at the life that you find here. So this little skink is called a blue-tailed skink. It was too quick for me to get a photo of, but it was, um, it has these beautiful black lines that go down the length of its body. And then from its head, it literally goes in a rainbow, red, orange, yellow, turquoise, and then this beautiful, vibrant, electric blue tail. And this was just amazing to me. Immediately, I start Googling colorful lizard, rainbow lizard, and I started to find out some information just through finding it out on, online. And then, I, this was also on the Olympic Trail. And I, I took my fat camera out. I was like, oh, I'm sure I'm going to see something. And at that moment, I just saw this beautiful, colorful, what I thought was a butterfly float past my head and land on a leaf. So I immediately took photos of it. And I even took a selfie with it. And, um, and I couldn't find it anywhere. I was trying to find a colorful, I thought it looked like it had a bit of a face on its back. I love the way that often these moths and butterflies have pictures and um, yeah, patterns on them. And I, was and I even found a butterfly book in the library and I couldn't find anything about it. And then I found out about a Facebook group called Bug City Hong Kong 2. And I uploaded my picture there. And this Facebook group is really amazing because they have some very knowledgeable people on the group and they help you to identify what, you, what you've seen. And so I was very excited when um, uh, there was a, a man called Roger. He's one of the very knowledgeable people. And he said, oh my gosh, this is a great sighting. This is a day flying moth. And there's only been a few sightings of it in Hong Kong. And so I was like, Wow, this is really exciting. And then everyone on the, on the group is like also, you know, very enthusiastic about moths and butterflies. And so you get a lot of interaction and people are excited. So that's been really fun to be part of. And the Bug City Hong Kong group is the, my main way of how I identify the things that I see. So there's just so much to see. And often there will be, um, I just can't get get to that bush or to that tree to get, so there's even more that I've seen that I just haven't been able to take a photo of. So basically how I do it is really, I just have my phone and I just, when I go running on the trails, I just take a photo with my phone. And so quite often I've had, you have to be really patient and I'll, I'll sometimes interrupt a run and, and dash up and down the path chasing a butterfly to, <laughs> until finally it lands where I can take a photo of it. And then and quite some, often it's, it's not a good photo at the end of all that. So, but it's been a good, it's been a fun project for me. So, um, oh yeah, also I wanted to say with the, with the whole learning curve of actually writing a book and then um, producing it, publishing it. So I actually am um, also an avid nature lover. And so I compiled this as um, a gift for her, for her birthday initially. And I just loved the whole process of, of writing this book from the discovery and going out walking with friends and family. And um, we have some more people coming. Hi, Carmen. Hi. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> so, yeah, I was just saying how I just loved the whole process of writing this book from the discovery to learning about it and um, doing some more research to writing about it. I just had a little journal in my bag that I would take with me everywhere I went. And if I had a moment on the ferry or at the coffee shop, I would sit and write. And then it took me a while to type it all out and get it ready for my mom. And then I thought, well, I've done it now. And I thought, 
I really wanted people to know more about Lantau. It is such a beautiful island. And I think it's really important that um, people know about how special this place is. Because the more people know about it, the more they'll care about it. And this also helps people who, who um, are working in conservation and taking care of this beautiful place. So, and Jono was really amazing how he, he spent quite a few evenings helping me just getting it all ready for the printer. So thank you, Jono. That was great. Are there any questions at this stage? Anything you'd like to say or comment? No? Okay. All right. Um, let's move on. So this, this book has actually been a great conversation starter with um, many people. And I found there are lots of people who are also very interested in the life that you see here. So I've met people who are bird people and they're just, they just love the birds around Lantau. So in Moiwo, there are actually 40 types of birds that breed in Moiwo alone. So it's an incredibly amazing place to live in. And also, um, I've met other people who have an, a very impressive insect collection where they've found insects and butterflies and stick insects and they've collected them in boxes over the years. They've been here for many years now and they showed me their collection is really, really impressive. And, um, and then I've also met another family who they, they've printed out a whole lot of pictures of animals and plants that you can find on the island and they've shared it with their kids and, and they quiz their kids and it's become a family game. So there's been so many different ways that people um, do actually also have very similar passions and, and so it's been fun to find like-minded people and to start conversations with them. And um, uh, okay, so the blue banded bee, let me try and find that for you. Oh, this is just an amazing creature, don't you think? When I saw this, I was like, is, is this a snake or a, it's, what is this? And it's a hammerhead worm. It's actually a worm. <laughs> so again, just, I'm utterly surprised again and again by the things you see on this island. And here is a beautiful creature and I'll read. <clears throat> Who, who's familiar with this one? Who's seen this one? <laughs> In my book. You can actually see, when, once you know about them, it's amazing how you, you start to see them more. So I'll find the... Oh, it's being elusive. Oh, here we go. So, 17 May. As I walk outside to my front gate, I swing it open only to see one of the most wondrous insects and one of my favorites, relaxing on the sloping ramp next to the steps. It's a lantern bug, Pyrops candelaria. That's thanks to the Bug City Hong Kong that I know <laughs> the names. And it definitely takes the prize for best dressed or most alien-like. It is a bright red, white polka dotted trunk-like snout, a vivid green cape decorated with white rings, yellow spots adorns its back. So this is actually a hollow snout and it pierces into trees and sucks out the sap. And often it has, um, it has so much sap that some of it comes out and you'll see other insects taking a bit of a drink. <laughs> bit of interesting facts there for you. <laughs> so let's try and find the blue banded bee. This was a beautiful discovery for me. This little bee with little rainbow stripes. And um, I have some other, oh, here we go. So this one is more blue banded. And I just never knew that there was a rainbow bee in existence. I always just thought of the honey bee. There are actually many different types of bees on Lantau. And you can hear them in, on, when you go in, especially in springtime, when you're up on the, on the mountains, there's literally, it's buzzing. You can hear, it's a loud humming sound. And some of the bushes, when they're in flower, you can see, a lot of bees on them. And so it's, it's really, yeah, amazing. And so this has been a bit of a, a mascot um, insect for me because it was just, just so beautiful. And this little one 
is I call him my Rasta bee because he's got a red, orange, and yellow stripe. <laughs> and, and so I saw the first one up on the Olympic, um, just above the Olympic Trail on the way to Tiger's Head. And it was in this beautiful flower. So it was just so incredible. And then I started looking out for them more. And just up um, on the way home, there's just a, a bit of wild grass and some plants. It's not really anywhere you would stop to look at. It's not really beautiful. But they have some turkey berry plants. It's these white ones. And they love these. So if you go in early morning, you will often see blue banded bees around these plants. And now that I know about them, I actually see them in my garden too. So this, just this morning, I saw one with really beautiful lemon yellow stripes. So you see them all around and they, they're really, they have a really loud buzzing sound when they fly around. They're quite entertaining to watch. So another thing that um, you had a question about a plant. So here's an interesting fact. If you send a photo to the Hong Kong herbarium, they will send you an email back with the name of the plant. So I, I, <laughs> I learned that from Tim. He's a plant person. And so um, we were taught, having a discussion about the different things that you see on Lantau. And then he would say, oh, this plant's in flower and you need to go down there. Down, you know, so we start sharing locations of where you find things. So there's some incredible, um, I think it's this way. So here, these were some interesting mushrooms that I saw. So I was running along the contour trail and I ran past and I thought, oh gosh, someone's dropped their potatoes. <laughs> and I thought, That's, that doesn't make sense. So I backtracked and I had a look and I realized that they're actually mushrooms. And then a week later I was on the trail again. This is, I love the contour trail, especially when it's been raining because it's just full of waterfalls when it's, when it's been a bit of rain. And I saw it, it, they split open and started having these yellow frills. And then a week later, it had turned into this yellow splash on the floor. And I would not have ever connected the two together. So it's just, I thought it was such an interesting, surprising transformation. Um, that was just an interesting discovery. I would not know. And actually, the Hong Kong herbarium don't do mushrooms. <laughs> so <laughs> I've yet to find the mushroom person in Hong Kong. Yeah, so if you know of the mushroom person, I've got lots of mushroom pictures. <laughs> I don't know about mushrooms yet. Yeah, but I would not suggest eating them. Yeah. And oh, actually, five was also in my book, again with um, a bee. So I was just at the back there looking through the books. And I'm, I, I can never resist, I always find a good, I find a number of books in, whenever I come here. And, and records, yeah, there's <laughs> records. And actually, Gary's really great, he'll, he'll sit and, I can sit down and he'll play different records for me until I find one I like. <laughs> so it's quite a nice way to spend an hour. <laughs> yeah. So um, I heard a little buzzing sound and I saw a bee in the shop and I thought, oh, I've got to rescue this bee. And so I found a, it, was, it was one of these lids. And I, I grabbed a book off the bookshelf and I was trying to follow the bee around, but it just wouldn't land anywhere. And, and so I thought, oh, I'll just have to wait for it to land. I was just watching it. And then it actually landed on my ring. And, and I'm allergic to bees. Last time I was stung by a bee, my foot swelled up like a football. <laughs> I was in, in Zimbabwe, far away from any pharmacy, so it was very uncomfortable. But anyway, I'm not afraid of bees. I, they don't sting they don't go out to sting, they only sting if they feel threatened. So the bee landed on my, my ring and I started walking it out and there was another customer in the shop and he was a bit surprised to see this bee on my hand. And so he exclaimed and it took off again and landed on my other ring. I just walked it out the shop and watched it fly away. So I just, yeah, that was a happy moment for me. I just, yeah, bees are very special and obviously um, we've all heard about how important it is to take care of the bees. So. Okay, so um, here, is some, here are some very interesting facts about Lantau, which I got from Around DB, the, an article from the magazine. Um, so, Lantau has 60% of the 110 dragonfly species in Hong Kong. There are over 200 different types of butterflies and 2,000 different types of moths. 
on Lantau. And um, there, are four, there are about 42 different uh, species of snakes found in Hong Kong, of which 30 are found on Lantau. So we really are a sport for choice. That's and way of looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, interesting thing with the snakes is I frequently see them when, we, when you run on the trail. And, and almost without fail, the snake, as soon as the snake sees you, that snake is, is just as keen to get away, even more keen to get away from you than you are. And um, so for me, it's like trying to take a photo of it. And it's, it's, you know, having nothing, it's not staying around for a photo shoot. And, um, and but what is interesting is I actually went to a talk um, of a, a lady who, who studied the, the green pit viper. And those are the snakes that are responsible for 95% of the bites in Hong Kong because they don't move. They, the vipers, they just sit around and they sit. I've seen an interesting photo of where of, you see it, it's coiled ready for a spring attack just on the side of the path. And so it's a good idea to go out with shoes if you, <laughs> yeah. But there hasn't been a death um, from a snake bite in Hong Kong for over 20 years because they have a really good emergency system going. So it's nothing to be afraid of, but obviously we want to take care of the snakes. They're really incredible, beautiful. And when you see them, it is really a treat. Especially the other day I saw a little, um, a young Chinese cobra and it was, it was going along the path. Not, I hadn't, I hadn't really surprised it. It was just quite far away from it still, but its hood was out and it was kind of jerking along, not really very, you know, that, not that elegant slither quite yet. But apparently the juveniles, they, they do that. They actually just go around with their hoods up. Just getting used to life, I guess. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, this was an amazing, another amazing discovery, also in my garden. So I have another picture here. Here, this is a little caterpillar. This is a common Mormon caterpillar. You'll, you'll, note, you'll probably recognize the butterfly if you see it. It's the large black striking swallowtail butterfly with little white markings, sometimes a little red. And so this is the, the, the caterpillar and it absolutely loves my lemon tree. You can see there are hardly any leaves left and, and this poor little lemon tree frequently loses all its leaves to these caterpillars. But as soon as it detected my presence, it curls its head in and swells up its body and mimics a snake. So I just, I just thought that was just amazing. So also, okay, so there are 235 species of ants, of which three are new discoveries to science and two are found in Lantau, so just recently. So they're still finding, they actually even found, a, they discovered a new species of snail here on Lantau as well. So they're still discovering more, um, more animals and insects all the time. Um, here's an interesting thing, 78 different types of mosquitoes. <laughs> you believe that one? <laughs> okay. So I went to a, an interesting talk by a group called DIY Bio um, at a university. And they were actually instrumental in, in inspiring me to, to do this project as well. Um, they had a panel of different people who were involved in studying the different life on Lantau and around, and, and around Hong Kong. And they were encouraging the public to get involved. So that's why it's called DIY Bio. And one of their main, uh, one of their main emphasis is also um, doing DNA um, studies to, and it really speeds up the, the um, identifying new creatures and new, I mean, there's just still immense amount that we still have to find out about this planet. And so they just said, get involved with science whatever it looks like, whether it's art or whether it's writing or whether it's about um, finding out, counting all the different species that you see. I mean, I was on the trail on Thursday and I lost track of how many different types of butterflies I saw on the trail. It's just, it's just packed with different species at the moment. And so um, that was one of the reasons why I did that. And also when I, when I lived in Sydney, I lived near the northern beaches, uh, near Manly Beach. Anyone know Manly Beach? You know Manly Beach? You know about Manly? 
So Manly Beach is this beautiful beach in, in Sydney and it has a, a little bay that curves around to the right hand side and it's not very big but that little bay is a marine reserve and it's just packed with with sea life. It's really, when you swim there, it's like swimming in an aquarium. There's just so much to see. And uh, my girls and I, we volunteered at this, this uh, to look after this reserve. And our job as volunteers was to set up a little table at the reserve. And we had a big uh, whiteboard, a blackboard and the divers would frequently go in and out, you know, lots of divers because it's, so, it's such a beautiful dive spot. And we would ask the divers what they'd seen. And then we would take photos of what they'd seen and put it up. And we started just to, and people would walk by and just be so interested, especially with the little sharks, because it was a nursery for um, the dusky whaler sharks, which were not in any way dangerous, but they they look exactly like a shark, and so and they'll have litters of up to ten. So you'll be swimming along, and you'll see you can count like nine or ten little sharks all swimming underneath you. So it's quite amazing. And um, part of being uh, in this volunteer group was the access to really interesting talks um, given by scientists and marine biologists. And so we took up we took that opportunity. And one very interesting project was the crayweed project and so Sydney has this extensive coastline and there used to be forests of seaweed and in the 70s in a six-month process the seaweed all turned yellow and died and so you just were left with literally just boulders empty boulders and the reason why they think is because of ill-treated sewage and so since then they have really cleaned up and the marine life is responding, the whales are coming back, the sharks are coming back, and so the, a lot of the sea life has returned to these waters, but not the crayweed. And so the marine biologists were wondering, how are they going to do that? How are we going to try and get this crayweed back? Because um, it was called crayweed because of the crayfish, was, you know, and there's a lot of sea life that just didn't have the habitat. And so they thought, well, how about we just take a, a, a crate or a mesh and we'll just tie crayweed onto it from other um, seaweed forests further up the coast and we'll just bolt it to the seafloor and see what happens. And so they did that in a small bay and they went back again sometime later and they were astounded at the success of this crayweed. Not only was the crayweed on the crate just growing really well, but it was actually propagating and spreading out around the area. And so they were so, this is fantastic. And they thought, how can we get the public involved in this? And so they thought, well, they, they made a little cartoon character for crayfish. because it, It's really important to connect with people on a personal level because um, yeah, that's when there's interest, that's when people put in time and effort and money. And then they also said, well, how about um, sponsoring an underwater Christmas tree? And so one of these crates was an underwater Christmas tree. And so people started, the money started coming in. And then with the DIY science, which is also called um, citizen science, which is basically when just general public get involved in science, the dive groups started getting on board and they would get one of their, it was their local area and they would go down and bolt the crayweed down and, and monitor it and take care of it. And I was very excited when I went back to Sydney in March this year to see some of these crayweed beds um, in Cabbage Tree Bay. So when I saw that, I was like, oh yes, it's working. And you could see it's growing very healthily there. And so that's a very exciting project that, that I just love the idea that just regular people can get involved and make a difference. So it's, doesn't, it's not just the scientists or the biologists who are doing everything, but we actually can also do have a part. And Hong Kong actually also has an opportunity for citizen science. And that there's an online site called iNaturalist. And you can get it on your phone, it's an app on your phone, or you can, you can do it on your computer. And basically what it is, is people upload photos of anything that they see. It can be plant or animal or insect or whatever it is 
and you can upload it. And then you have people who will go and they will identify your photograph and they put it um, a geographical on the map where you see it. And so this gives scientists a huge amount of data that would be very important, very difficult to get by themselves and you know, even expensive. So this is a great thing that you can also be a part of. And it's really interesting to see what you, you can go on the site and see what's been seen and how many sightings. So that's just something that you could look into yourselves. All right. We'll be at B. This is an interesting moth. So I have um, a hedge of Buddhist pine in my garden. I absolutely love this hedge. It's, it's beautiful. And Buddhist pine is, is one of the um, favorite plants in Hong Kong, as I'm sure you, you're aware. You'll, you often see it. And um, all of a sudden, my hedge was full of these, can you see, these um, brightly colored caterpillars. And they were, they were very good at eating <laughs> everything in my hedge. I was wondering, oh, how are they going to actually eat my whole hedge? But these caterpillars have actually not been seen in Hong Kong until recently, though their distribution is all around Hong Kong. And so some people were, were thinking maybe uh, when Hong Kong was deforested, they lost their, their habitat, they lost their food source, and so they, they went away, but, but they're back now. And so some people are saying, oh, they're alien and you know, they're, they're invasive. And I think also um, if someone has a beautiful Buddhist pine in their garden, suddenly it's been <laughs> completely <laughs> um, de-leafed by these caterpillars. You can imagine the, the, the worry. But actually the, the Buddhist pines do recover very well and they just grow back. And, and then they, they have these, these beautiful moths, which are not very good flyers, but these beautiful moths form and they are just iridescent blue on their body. So they are quite a, a dramatic. And on the... Um, the Bug City Hong Kong group, there was a flurry of people posting photos of these beautiful moths saying, what is it, what is it? And um, it's got an interesting name. If I can, it's Melonia Zonia, which I quite like. So I, I've been learning a little bit of the, um, the scientific names and they're, they're quite poetic. I quite like to, to, um, to say them out loud. And actually, um, Sally's book is, is also just, an incredible work of art and what I do is is in the morning when I have my coffee I'll read one of her one of the pages and look at one of the artworks which is a nice way to do it because you really appreciate that page and and each each of those artworks are just exquisite so and I've learned so much actually one thing I, I did learn there was um, there was one plant that had a seed that has um, a, a little it looks like a little string and it looks it's mimicking a caterpillar on a string you know how the caterpillars sometimes suspend themselves on their their silk strings and then a wasp um, thinks it's a caterpillar and will actually take the seed and disperse it but it's it's a seed and then um, Kanduri Farm so I, I, I see with their posts on Instagram Kanduri Farm just on the same day that I read about it in Sally's book they actually had a little video of a little wasp on one of these seeds. And I was like, oh my gosh, I know that. That's really exciting. So the discovery is just, it just keeps on growing and go, you know, there's just so much to really enjoy on this island. Um, so these are just, Lantau has quite a few swallowtail butterflies. We can get a bit blasé. I was just thinking the other day, we can get a bit, bit blasé about them. It's like, oh, it's just another swallowtail, but they really are quite impressive. <laughs> They're so beautiful. Anyway, um, and this is just, this is a russet percher. I just loved the, the translucent uh, wings. There are quite a few moths and butterflies on, on, in Hong Kong that have these, trans, these windows in their, in their wings. They're my, one of my favorites. And this is an interesting, this is called the owl moth. I don't know if you can see the owl, the owl face in it. 
And this was also in my garden. So whenever I, whenever I um, open my door in the morning, I often go and water my garden first thing in the morning. I always have a sense of I'm on safari, like what's in my garden? And when there's something in something there, it's really exciting. And, and this, I also just think it's a very happy, it just looks like it's got a big smiley face. <laughs> so, and I'm sure you've heard this one, the Asi Asian painted frog. You can see it. It sounds like that mooing, that the very loud mooing sound. It's so loud. I mean, I've been up on the hills at nighttime and you can hear them. It's just amazing. This one was in my garden as well. Oh, here's that little juvenile cobra that was slithering along in that jerky way. Okay, so I think that's it for, from me. Is there any questions or comments and anything else? If anybody's got any questions, I can, there's a little microphone to speak into, so, <coughs> anybody? So what's next? <laughs> so what's next what's was the next? question. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I, I, I didn't think another nature journal would be, <laughs> would be, but what I am doing Amazing. is I've started an Instagram um, with, with the, the new discoveries. And so I do try and, and still identify through Black City and through the Hong Kong Herbarium and through just my own, own online research. And so I've just been, yeah, you can see in the, there is a, um, in the front page, there's a link to it. To, so you can see there. And yeah, then the next, yeah, yeah that's, that's what I'm thinking. I'm, I've started, I've actually found another book from Vibe that's, <laughs> which I bought also thinking, oh, it might be interesting. So it was, it's, a, um, it's just a, a diary about life as, as a child. And so I thought maybe that would be interesting. Another thing I thought, what, what my, another project that I just thought this week actually was to do a project specifically geared for children. Um, I'd love to have an, a beautifully illustrated book um, with some of the amazing things that you find on Hong, in Hong Kong and Lantau. So I have lots of ideas. Uh, yeah, I'm always very busy <laughs> with projects. Now, one thing you mentioned, Shah, is that see, um, so basically you, lots of links and lots of terms of reference for finding out about you know plants and animals and butterflies and snakes. So it would be good, we can put those perhaps on the Facebook site if you let me have a list sure. of those so that everybody at home can then look as well and, and use those references like Kadori Farm and yeah, the guys. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so we'll do that. Is there anything, so we're, it's a diary of course, your book, and mm. um, so we're in the month of October. Is there anything, what, what happened in October last year? What, what, what can we expect to sort of, <laughs> anything interesting to look out for? Oh. This was, this is a, mu a lunar moth. It's beautiful. So I, I had heard of, I had heard of these. And when I saw it, I was just thrilled. Uh, they are this big. Wow. They are absolutely amazing. They're just incredible. So, and Hong Kong also has um, an Atlas moth, which is also a very large moth, which is on my wish list. So I haven't seen that yet, but it's on my wish list. So yeah. those are evening spotting. No, I saw that during the day. Why is it called moon? Is it just because it looks like a moon? Yeah, I don't know why. It's the moon. Yeah, it'd be interesting to find out. And whereabouts did you spot it? I saw that on uh, going to, towards Chima One. Okay, all right. Yeah, that actually there are some places in Hong Kong that are are hot spots. Um, the one is Olympic Trail. I often see interesting things on Olympic Trail and going up to Tiger's Head. Another is this coastal path, uh, especially for butterflies. I, I had a run there where I had a butterfly land on my hand. I had three or four land on my foot. And there was just these interactions with this wildlife wherever I went. It was just amazing. You're a butterfly magnet. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> That's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for a very educational natural science talk for oh, me. Oh, good. Pleasure. I, I, I am um, I'm so ignorant about these things. 
But um, you said you've been to many countries. What is the uniqueness or characteristic of Lantau or Mui Bo wildlife? Uh, I would have to say probably the insects for me. The insect life here is just phenomenal. The diversity and the variety, it's, and, and also how many there are. It's, it's, um, it is quite an incredible place just for how, how many different types of insects there are. And, and particularly the butterflies for me and the moths. Yeah. We do do a book on insects. Well, yes, that could be, yeah, that is definitely one of my passions, yeah, and there's, there's definitely a lot of material. <laughs> snakes is another one, actually. A lot of people come in here and ask for snake books, and yes. um, the government did use to print, um, you know, a book, um, like the bird one that you've got, and also the trees one. They did one on snakes, and they did one on insects. They no longer print those books, unfortunately. Mm. Um, I've been several times to the, to the offices there where I get the bird books. I don't know what the reason for that is, but um, there is a big demand for those books. And there I know, is. you know probably Will Sargent, who's yes. our Lantau snake catcher, yes, could probably absolutely. do a good contribution yeah. to that as well. Yeah, there is, there is a lack of information in, mm. um, of, of the wildlife in Hong Kong. And it's, in some, mm. sometimes you'll find some of the older books in, in the libraries, but they're quite out of date. And, and so I think what's happened is people are now are sharing things online and there's a number of very beautiful um, interesting websites that you can go in and learn a bit more about about these and there's also a, a snake Facebook group and um, there's yeah they often have uploadings of people's interesting sightings yeah and Williams uh, yeah. Williams the snake guy <laughs> he also does snake safaris so that's also on my wish list I want to do that soon hmm. Okay, any more questions, David? Wow. David? Yeah. I mean, you've yeah. talked a lot about the excitement and the highlights of your book. I was wondering what maybe you could share with us the hardest thing about writing. Um, I'd say editing was quite hard. Was quite a, it, it was a very a long, drawn-out process. Mm -hmm because it's quite hard to sometimes see your mistakes. <laughs> you read it and you think, it looks fine, and then you read it again, you can't, you know. Jono helped with some of the editing and, and my, yeah. So I think, I actually just loved everything about this project. Mm. It was just, I just absolutely loved it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I would really love to, yeah, do another project again. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. yeah. Thank you. How long did it take from, inception to the books coming out well a couple of weeks ago yeah, wasn't okay. it really yes yeah. so I started to I I was writing all the way through last year and I started to type it in in December and it took me I I had to, uh, quite a few late nights and early mornings to to get the time to to do that and then I, I worked on it for about two months to get the first draft for my mom and then I spent another, probably another three months editing it a bit more and fine tuning it and then working with the printers. Yeah. So it's, it's not a quick project. It was, it was a good learning curve for me. And also interesting to, to know that you don't have to go through the publishing house to, to you know, publish your own book. Mm. So the book, hold it up. So the book is is, is available here, hundred dollars for one, I think. Yes. And then there's a special deal. Yes, there's a special deal for Christmas. So for <laughs> Christmas, I thought it, it is quite a nice way to show your friends and family about Lantel. And so if you buy four, it's two eighty. So it's a very good deal. And so yeah, one for one hundred or four for two eighty, and you can share a bit of um, Lantel life with your friends and family. And Shah will sign them all and dedicate them to everybody? Oh, sure, or? yeah, I'll sign. <laughs> Could be a long day. <laughs> Just an observation okay. yep. about um, this kind of a project and lack of hmm. uh, publishing bird books in, in nature books yeah. like that nowadays. It's, you know, 30 years ago, nobody was hiking the trails in Hong Kong. That's true, yeah. And it was, uh, it, it was such an urban life. And yeah. People just didn't like getting outside and getting mm. outdoors. So it's this kind of a thing is um, exposing people that hey, there's a lot to see and a lot mm. to discover. So, so that might be part of it. Is yeah. just uh, an 
uninformed population that just didn't yeah. realize that. And it just now, I mean, nowadays we start to see lots more people on the trail. So it's maybe. Uh, yeah, it's people like getting out there. Interest that's mm. yeah. Growing, hopefully. Yeah. That and the information flow out there these days is. Uh, yeah. That's we've got over information overkill in, in some respects, but. You can tune in at least to some of these sites which you've mm -hmm. you've found, which well, are good. Yeah, forums. Yeah. 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 Actually, yeah. Lantau has um, a lot of variety, so you can you can go onto the trails for half an hour, or you could go and get lost for days. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a lot of variety, and and when I was recovering, I would there I, could, I would go to the more contour paths. And, um, but you can see interesting things at, up on, that, on uh, Lantau Island. I saw this on Lantau Peak. I saw an incredible little brightly colored um, spider, real jewel of a spider. And you just will see different things wherever you go. But you can actually just head off mm. and, and you don't have to be very fit or even go very far to enjoy the trails. Yeah, that's very true. Yep. Is it? Yep. The only bookshop where we can buy your book. Do well, you have a distributor? Um, I'm actually a, a Lantau Base Camp, the sports shop next door. They also have my book. And I'm in negotiation with another uh, two places to stock it. Outside yeah. Lantau? Yes. Yeah, so hopefully she'll get a distribution, <laughs> Hong Kong side. <laughs> yeah. We've got some good contacts, haven't we? So we've put you in touch with those and hopefully yeah. it'll be not just available here only. And Well, here, as we say, Lantau Base Camp and us, we both stock. Yeah. You so. had a distributor, yeah? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, actually. We've got an abundance of them yeah. here today. Yeah. Actually, Gary was, yeah. when I, I came in before I even went through this whole process and I spoke mm. to Gary about it and he was so encouraging and I think it was, mm. yeah, it's really great. Yeah, we, that's yeah. what we're here for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> what you. I see we're here for anyway. <laughs> yeah. If, if you were advising somebody who doesn't run or walk the trails very often, which trail would they start? Um, I would say this coastal track yeah. is quite a nice. Um, there's a a little pagoda that's not too far, and it's quite. Um, it's not great very. Views. Yeah, yeah, beautiful views of the ocean and lots of butterflies. Mm. And yeah, it's a, I've seen a beautiful python there once. So you can see a lot just on this trail. And you don't have to go very far to enjoy it. Yeah. So sort of around the back, you know, near the concrete factory is some steps that go up. And you just go up there and then you, you get onto that trail. It literally goes around the coast and you can go up to that pagoda and, and down to Poyo. We can go around the coast to... Um, Chi Ma Wan and, mm. and, and um, Chap Long and places. We well, do that every week. Even at Nong Ping, there's a, right. there's a walk that goes around Nong Ping mm. and yeah. that's also lovely there. Mm. Yeah, I think that's part of the Olympic Trail, isn't it? Isn't it sort of the end part? It's called the, what's it called? the Wisdom Trail. Wisdom Trail, yeah. yeah. That's it. yeah. <laughs> Any more questions, anyone? No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much good. for coming. All right. Thank, Thank you, Sal. Very good. Brilliant. Well, there's plenty right. to eat, and there's some lovely wine from Seoul. Thank you yep. to Seoul. And thank you to Shah for the <laughs> buffet. <laughs> so please, yeah, stay around and, and Stay around, enjoy. enjoy the food and the drink. Yeah.